The MCU has been on our screens for years now, and so keeping up with everything that has happened throughout those years can be a bit tricky, but today I am going to go through everything that has happened in the MCU so far, just as we enter the next phase. So it started with the first ever comic book character, Batman. Made famous with the popular catchphrase, is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's technically gliding, so it must be Batman. The movie adaptation actually starred Christian Bale as Patrick Batman, the millionaire turned vigilante. Next came Iron Man, who developed his superpowers after he had an allergic reaction to some rust that was on his favourite bicycle. Iron Man had to take on Obadiah Stane, who decided to become a robot terrorist after he had all his work disregarded by Howard Stark and lost the role of CEO to Tony Stark. Next up we had the Aldrich Killian movie. Aldrich Killian was a character everyone wanted to see on the big screen. Aldrich Killian was a very interesting character who had a dominating screen presence and everyone could feel for his motivations to burn some people after he had all his work disregarded by Tony Stark. Next they introduced Captain America, who originally signed on to fight Liberal America but for PR reasons decided to fight the Nazis instead. His main enemy was Red Skull, who decided to join the Nazis after his entire work was disregarded by Howard Stark. The next movie in the MCU is Cocaine Bear, which is about a bear that becomes so powerful after doing a ton of cocaine. Cocaine Bear had to take on Pablo Escobar. You really feel for Pablo Escobar in this movie, as he starts out a genuine nice man but slowly descends into the man who decides to start a drug empire after having his life work disregarded by Tony Stark. In the end credits scene we get a teaser for Cocaine Shark and Samuel Jackson turns up and says, have you heard of the Cocaine Initiative? Next is Thor. Thor has to take on his brother Loki who is a trickster. Loki is a very powerful trickster as he is very convincing. This is because he learned how to be convincing from his dad who was award winning actor Anthony Hopkins. Loki decided to use his power for evil however after his life work was disregarded by Tony Stark. Next up is Iron Man 3. In this film Iron Man has to take on the evil Ben Kingsley who hacks into networks to display his new movie just before Oscars season in hopes of getting his new movie nominated. Ben Kingsley decided to get into acting after all his life work was disregarded by Tony Stark. Next is the Avengers in which we get the first ultimate villain of the MCU. The first ultimate villain is the unexpected boredom of the summer holiday. In the next phase we get introduced to Piercing Man. Piercing Man only has one film however because he gets ripped apart at the end of his film by Magneto. This is the first film we get to see Magneto. Now Magneto originally only used his powers for good then started doing evil things like putting his magnetic hands onto people's Game Boys, completely ruining the system. Magneto actually only turned evil after he was fired from his job at Stark Tower, when Tony Stark disregarded his life's work. Next is the Guardians of the Galaxy, which is actually where we first get introduced to Thanos. Now Thanos is a very memorable movie villain, not just because of his menacing presence, but also his motivations for the things he does. You see Thanos doesn't just want to murder half the galaxy because he is evil for evil's sake. He wants to murder half the galaxy as revenge after his entire life's work was disregarded by Tony Stark. Next up we have Spider-Man who has to take on Mysterio. Now Mysterio spends half the movie posing as a hero to get close to Spider-Man who is friends with Tony Stark. This is because Mysterio is actually an ex-Stark employee who had his life's work disregarded by Tony Stark. Next up was another big Marvel event with Captain America's Civil War, where Captain America and Iron Man have a fight after Tony Stark disregarded all of Captain America's life work. Next was Black Panther. The antagonist of this film was Killmonger. You can't help but sympathise with Killmonger a little bit as he realises that his father who he lost at a young age was supposed to be next in line to become Black Panther and that would have been his way into a better life. He then works on a plan to take it back which leads to a fight to the death with T'Challa, the current Black Panther. Killmonger gets critically injured and refuses medical help 
but sadly, just before he dies, Iron Man flies in and disregards his entire life's work. During this time, Thanos was collecting the Infinity Stones, which wasn't hard because most of them were just in Stoke-on-Trent. Now, the only person who could defeat Thanos is Captain Karma, and during their fight, Thanos went to punch Captain Karma, but slipped on an orange peel and died. The orange peel was never actually meant to be there, but it was disregarded onto the floor by Tony Stark at lunchtime. Now, we start to see other groups team up, like the Avengers did. For the next group, we see Instant Raw Man team up with Spaghetti Man and Captain Soup to form the Super Noodles. At the end of the Super Noodles movie, we see that Iron Man has created his own Infinity Gauntlet and uses it to take his own life, after he disregarded all of his own life's work. That's when Bruce Willis is shown at the end credit scene to reveal it is in the same universe as Unbreakable. So that's the entire MCU so far. You are now all caught up and ready to go. The next big phase, where all your favourite heroes start thinking of settling down and let their kids fight the bad guys instead. Bye, have a beautiful time.